Greetings, Earth enthusiasts. If you ever wondered about the incredible perspectives our planet has to offer from high above here in the right place, I am Dr. Klaar Kutsi, and I'm thrilled to be your guide on this captivating journey into the world of remote sensing. Welcome. And please remember to like, subscribe to, and share this video. Thank you. In the previous video tutorial, we continued on our journey using the Terra Climate data set or data product and we specifically look at a couple of reducers. Now, as I said in that video um, or tutorial, the aim of a reducer is to reduce, as the word right to say, uh, the image collection uh, to a singular image or to one or two images. Um, that's what the reducer does. It, remember in that specific uh, Terak climate uh, image collection, there's 765 odd images. Uh, we want to reduce it within a sp specific time period to a singular image. And how we do that is by using a reducer. And the reducer that we, that we used is our standard statistical reducers in terms of measures of centrality and measures of dispersion. So we used mean, median, sum, max, minimum, and mode as uh, our standard measures of centrality reducers. Remember, these um, reducers or statistics are exactly the same as normal statistics that you will do in quantitative work in Excel, for example. So the mean is the mean, median, this, it's exactly the same. Um, it's just based on an image. So that mean is the mean value of 765 uh, values. Uh, so it's exactly the same. Um, and so we reduced our, remember again, if you look at our image collection, it's 756, which is in this image collection, because it's for the whole, year, whole period, uh, and we clip it. And importantly, we use a scaling variable. Remember, the scaling variable comes from um, the landing page, scale, etc. We've been through that. Okay, so that's our standard um, reducers that we use, and then also these reducers. Uh, here the code is a little bit different. You can't just basically say that. Although in this case you could, for example, use the longer one and say, listen, um, let's do it, for example, as follows. Um, reduce, e-reducer, rather than standard deviation, we're just gonna use mean, and we take that out. So potentially you can do this. Um, it's exactly the same as if we had this mean so this is just a little bit of a longer format of writing at this but it's exactly the same idea but with these ones you cannot use the shorter let's call it method you have to go the reducer function okay nonetheless it will give you a singular image um, for that specific um, statistic standard deviation skewness kurtosis etc now we didn't bring, we didn't do a variance in our previous video tutorial, so I've also included a variance uh, reducer. Okay, so here we've got standard deviation, we've got skewness, kurtosis, and variation. And the idea is just to look at the distribution, um, whether it's a normal distribution or how far from a normal, the negative, the size of the distribution, whether it's flat, high, etc., etc. So there we just look at this, the. Um, the, the distribution itself and remember the idea here is to determine whether these variables are good approximations of the all the variables in the image collection where the mean is statistically significant representation of all the variables etc how standard statistics okay and then remember i said we're going to do a range now a range is basically just subtracting the maximum from the minimum so it's a straightforward I've got the maximum variable. Remember, that's the variable there that we've created, which is the maximum. And we subtract the minimum, this value here. And that is what we call a range. Similar as you would done in Excel. No different. Okay, so we generate a range. So two new uh, variables that we, um, or two new images or reducers that we apply is a variance reducer and a calculation of a range, which gives us also a singular image from those reduced images. Okay, and then remember our visual, visualization parameters. Now I'm back at maximum temperatures. 
and therefore it's 0 0.1 and 30 and 30. Remember if we had wind speed that would be I think Vs, let's have a look and see Vs is wind speed yes and it's 0 0.01 so I would have to change that to 0 0.01 and the wind speed would not be minus 30 to 30. You can have a minus wind speed, so it would be zero to whatever. So remember, if you change the band to make those adjustments. And then we simply just display it. Remember, I'm displaying now or adding these additional two layers, the variance and the range ones, the ones that I didn't have previously. Okay. But I can also do percentage reducers. Now, this is quite neat as well. Uh, if you want to play around with this. So if you want to do just a percentage, uh, let's say uh, a 25 percent or 30 percent or 40 percent or whatever the case might be, you want to generate the image that captures the, the, that quartile or that percentage. Okay, then you can simply use a percentile reducer. Okay, so I've got my data set, same as um, with uh, this reducer. So this basically is exactly the same. Except within the brackets, you can see we had nothing in those brackets. Okay, I had nothing. Uh, I actually have now a value, which means I want to calculate the 25th percentile image. Okay, so I'm reducing using the reduce of function in Google Earth Enter, uh, the Engine, the percentile reducer, and I want to calculate the 25th percentile. Uh, image or values okay and I call it a percent remember the variable name is again up to you and then I'm just presenting that specific image adding that layer I'm adding that value I'm giving it the standard visualization parameters and I'm just calling 25 percent again you can change that to 40 percent if you want to you can take it to 80 percent if you want to that is totally up to your discretion so I'm creating a singular image, a reduced image, and that would be a percentile image, which is a 25th percentile. Same as with, um, with the mean and the median mode. All I'm doing is I'm reducing it for that particular image, a 25th percentile image, and I add it to my, um, my layers. So that gives a, 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 a different perspective again. Or if I want to do more than one percentile so I don't want to do this over and over and over I can create a 0 a 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 19 percentile uh, uh, images so I'm here I'm create, going to create 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 images and you can change this you don't have to start with 0 because remember 0 is the minimum so this is just a double counting of uh, of this one so we know that the 0 percent percentile zero percentile would be the minimum image or minimum values so I actually should exclude this because it's double counting but anyway let's leave it in let's see if it works and I'm excluding the hundred because hundred would be the maximum that would be that one there um, and then the 50th percent that would be um, the mean okay so but anyway let's have a look and see so it's a tenth of the zero percentile image, the 10th percentile, the 20, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent percentile, 60 percentile, 70 percentile, 80 and so forth and so forth. Okay, so the, so the values, maximum temperature should increase from zero to 100 percent. Okay, and then I'm just putting it in a function in the sense that it's going to create those variable so i don't have to specify this function 10 times i specify it once and it will automatically generate the 10 images and it will give it this p which is the percentiles here plus uh, yeah the percentile so it will give me a zero percentile image it will give me a 10 percentile image a 20 percentile image based on this um, minimum maximum and my color plate which is a standard okay so what I've basically done in this video tutorial is to generate additional um, reducers, variance, and range. But the interesting then what I want to focus is on the percentile reducer, which is that either a singular percentile image or a range of percentile images. Okay, so let's have a look and see what happens. Let's first go to the inspector and let's use our 
coastal area again. Let's click this particular area there. And let's see. It's now going to generate a number of uh, statistics. It's going to generate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Roughly 22 statistics uh, that it's going to generate. So there's the mean value. Okay, 21. Our median value, our sum, uh, sum is rubbish. Our maximum value, that would also be the 100th percentile. Our minimum va 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 value, which will be our 0th percentile. Our mode, which is 17.4, standard deviation, skewness, choices, and variance. Okay, you can see it's negatively skew and it's a uh, um, flattish um, distribution. Uh, variance is 10, it's quite large. You see, here's our range um, that we've calculated, which is 12. Remember, the range is this calculation here. The range is max minus minimum. That's our range. So that is, is where's the max now? The range is 12.7. Now, that should be the maximum, which is 20.7, minus the mean is 15. So the difference is 12.7. So the range is 12.7. Voila. Magic. There's my 25th um, quantile, which is 18.6 for that specific um, location. And that is this value generated here yeah, by this re reducer that is generated there. That's a 25th um, percentile value, which is 18.6. We'll have a look at now and see how accurate it is. There's my 0%, which is 15. Okay, let's have a look at minimum. Minimum 15. Okay, so my 0% uh, percentile value and my minimum value is exactly the same. There's my 10% value, 17.3. My 30%, 20% is 18, 30% is 25. Remember, our 25 percentile value is 18.6, so that should lie between 20 and 30. So it's 18 and 19, and my 25 is 18.6, you see, lies in the middle of these two. There's my 50%, it's 22.4. Let's go and have a look at the mean. Our mean is, or our median is 22.4. So our 50th percent is the one in the middle, which is also called our median. So and there's our 60%, 70, you can see the values systematically increases as the percentages increase. You can see that. The 90th percentile value is 25.9. Let's have a look at the max. Our maximum value is 27.7, and this is 25.9, so yeah, so it's still below it. So you can see it generates all these statistics for that specific location. So that is generated from the image collection of 756 um, images. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at the layers. So now this may, may or may not be tricky in the sense that there's a lot of them so let's quickly have a look and see if we can figure out what's going on here okay so remember we've been through the mean we've been through the median you can see that there's not much difference between the two okay and that's because you can see the mean and the median very very similar 0 0.7 degrees the sum, now sum will just be red, that's rubbish. Maximum also will just be quite red because it's in the upper values, minimum. So there's the minimum, there's the max. Max, minimum, maximum, minimum. You can see the difference. And obviously, the range would be in between those two. See, the range would be in the two. Mode, okay, standard deviation, skewness, choices variance there's my variance that's quite interesting it gives you indication of where the variance are the most and there's my range okay then there's my 25th percentage um, image okay so now we go with the percent of there's my zero percent image there's my 10 you can see it's systematically getting redder and redder and redder more red as the percentage increases because you're going higher and higher, maximum temperatures. Here's my 20%, my 30%, my 40%, my 50%, my 60%, my 70%, 80%, 90%, 
my 80% and my 90% percentile images and obviously the maximum would then be um, this one there okay so that's quite interesting stuff in working with percentiles in terms of reducing now obviously you can use these reducers um, in any of your um, data sets or data products or images whether it's nighttime daytime uh, whatever NDVI, NDV, uh, population whatever the case might be if you have an image collection you can do this now to do this to for these statistics to be let's call it meaningful um, you should have an image collection with a with a large number of images I and mean, if you're going to do an image collection there's only five or six images then there and you want to do all this uh, it's you're going to get rubbish um, the results so the reducers that you can use is dependent on the number of images in your image collection the more images in your image collection uh, more reducers you can apply the more you can play around remember what i said in the beginning of this journey with this data set the the, the beauty of this data set is, is is enormous in terms of its number of images therefore it allows or it enables you to do all sorts of things that you otherwise would not be able to do but as smaller image collections or, or um, image collections with with very few images um, gets bigger and bigger and bigger as time goes on more and more of these things you will be able to apply to those image collections but yeah i mean just to do percentiles if you want to do this uh, image collection of 100 to 200 images will be barely sufficient um, otherwise you're going to get rubbish uh, statistics but so as I said, the idea with, with working on this data set is not necessarily the results, although interestingly and fascinating. It's more to play around in Google Earth Engine to see what is possible, what we can do. Uh, because if you can do it to one image collection, chances is good that over time you would be able to do it with more and more data, um, data sets or data image collections. So that's the beauty of working with this Terra Climate data set. It allows you to op to really open up the, the journey or open up the applications or methods in terms of what Google Earth Engine is capable of. Yeah, so this is um, yeah quite interesting stuff. Um, and I, I think this would be uh, not necessarily all of these percentiles, but maybe some of them would be quite interesting in terms of our daytime images whether it's Landsat or Sentinel I think that could be quite interesting to have a look at those images for these different percentiles just an, a note um, to get more information on these reducers you can always go to Google Earth Engine website um, I'll, leave a, I'll leave this uh, link in the, in the description now and have a look at it there's the reducers and there's all the reducers that you can find uh, and you see we've played around with some of them but obviously there's there's many many more reducers but they all have the same function they all returns a single image from an image collection so there's a whole lot of them and as i said they all work on the same principle or the same code in that sense that it's your image let's call it it it's your your name of your it's your data set which is the image collection when it's all the images dot reduce and then using the ee dot reducer dot and this is where you change the reducer the statistic and the brackets and stuff so most of the reducers work on this code some of you can manipulate a little bit like this one where you add a percentage etc etc but they all basically follow the same code or the same script um, with slight um, changes or slight deviations but generally exactly the same okay so go and play around as i said i will i will leave this i will leave a link in the uh, uh, description of, of this site and i said if you click on any of the reducers let's say first one that we normally use so if you have an image collection you just want to get the first collection you use ee first and then there's one for last if you want to look at the last collection 
then that is the reducer. If you want to look at the ketosis, as I said, there's the ketosis. Okay, remember, it's reduce, bracket, EE reduces, dot ketosis, and then close bracket, and uh, yeah. A linear fit, max, there's our maximum reducer, etc., etc. Okay, so play around with the reducers. It's a neat way of presenting. Uh, otherwise, fairly standard image. Um, and yeah, maybe some interesting results, as I said, that comes out of uh, of, 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 of these diff different reducers. Yes, and uh, yeah, thanks, man. I, um, I trust you enjoyed this little quick little video tutorial on uh, reducers. Uh, I think it, uh, it's, it's, it's neat to, to be able to play around with these reducers um, and some interesting stuff that comes out of here. Great. Okay. Well, as I said, thanks for joining me. It was great having you on board. Um, this is a wonderful journey into remote sensing. I'm finally enjoying it and I'm glad to have you as company. And I look forward um, in what is uh, around the corner for us. Looking forward to having you on board. Uh, remember to please, as I said, <laughs> sharing is caring. Please like, subscribe, for, uh, share the video. Thanks. And uh, I'll see you on the other side.